Will Stephon Diggs get revenge against the Bills? Yeah, I believe he will. I think the Houston Texans win this game. And the one thing I do love about Stephon Diggs, who's been voted the captain in Houston, is that this team rallies around him. This team sees him as a mentor. He's been able to rebuild some of the things that we heard out of the Bills locker room in his new destination. And I think they'll play hard for him. And I also believe he'll play well against the Buffalo Bills. It's all fun and games when you can distribute the ball to everyone and everybody's singing kumbaya because this guy got three catches, this guy got two catches. But when the Baltimore Ravens jump out on you early and you need somebody that can go make a play, you need someone that can go win, you didn't have that guy. It's like a basketball team, right? When you're running the motion offense all through the game and they're like, you never know who's going to be the guy, who's going to take the shot. And then you get to the end of the game and that team doesn't know who's going to take the shot. Right. You can be in that position position as well when you don't have a number one receiver and I feel like that's where the Buffalo Bills are now and even with Stephon Diggs not being the number one choice right. in Houston yeah. he is by far better than every option in Buffalo yeah Nico Collins is the best receiver in Houston but I like that analogy because like if you look at the Warriors for all those years they're winning championships like you never knew who was going to get the open look except at the end of the game yes. it was always Steph Right. And sometimes Clay, but but they knew who they wanted to go to at the end of the game. Has Buffalo lost that at l last week? I'm mean, going in. Oh, OK, go ahead. Bart. Oh. I, I, can we make that face? What a can look. we get a good look? Give me that face again. Uh, go I'm back a week ago. I'm just saying like hot tub time machine. Yes. This time last week, I told you that I believe that the Bills were paper champions and we were going to see who they hot were time. in the next three weeks. Mm -hmm. And I told you that the Baltimore Ravens were going to beat them up physically because they didn't have a good secondary. And I told you when you play against a good defense and I think that the Houston Texans are a good defense. And you try and do all that stuff with the trickery and the motions and the shifts. That's because at the end of the day, you're doing basic stuff. And a great defense won't let you dictate the terms of engagement, the rules of engagement by motioning. And when you strip it down, they're, they're a zone running team and they're a boot waggle type of guy. And the, the, the fact that they did, to Ryan's point, that they didn't have a number one guy that you had to grab the safety allows you to be able to take that running game away because now you can say, I can put my second best corner on there and lock their guy down and put that safety in the box and make him one dimensional. And then now Josh Allen has to prove that he's not blank, man. We know he's Superman, but then that puts the ball at risk. And that's where the turnover start to show. This happens when you are with a team that's 53, a little bit more with practice squad and whatnot, but you can always have one dude, mm -hmm. got one sucker that always want to try to play company man. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, well, you know, he's really a bad guy. It's, it's, it's a lot on us. No, it's a lot on you. Because you don't like him for whatever reasons, or you got a problem. Maybe his car is prettier than yours. Mm. Maybe his girlfriend is prettier than yours. Maybe mm. his wife is prettier than yours. You mad at him because his watch is brighter than yours. It's always one of them dudes that will tell the media, oh, man, he's he just always in the way. Oh, he always doing it. And, and then when he goes to another team, Mm -hmm. People go, well, that ain't good, man. That ain't no problem with us. We love him. He does great things by us. The quarterback is inspirational. He's just motivating. But the receiver is outlandish and crazy and wild. They had a lot of success together. Did they achieve the ultimate goal of winning a Super Bowl together, which no. was obviously what they intended no, but to I do? Dare you, no, but I dare you to disrespect and treat Mr. Josh Allen that way. That is the, okay. he's the quarterback. Yes. Yeah, I got it. That's what they're yeah, saying. I got it. Oh, he's smart. Yeah, he's I just, get it. He's just mad that the guy ran the wrong route. Oh, you sure he ran the wrong route? Or did the quarterback make the wrong read? I understand it. I just, nothing, one, two things can be true also, right? Yes. Like Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen needed each other at that point in their careers. They did. It, it, feels, it feels like more to me, and maybe it's just me, I feel more that, Josh Allen needs Stefan. Stefan was actually headed in the right direction in Minnesota, but he wanted more money because Thielen was making more money than him. Right. And they didn't want to pay him, so he was like, come on, man, y'all tripping. You know, he wants to win the game, first and foremost, but I think it'll be, a, a numbers-wise, it'll be, uh, I got him winning, but it'll be like a six-catch, 85-yard, touchdown game-type situation mm -hmm. where Josh Allen will struggle alone. Because with Josh Allen, one well, the reason I say Josh will struggle because he's playing against a good defense, a great defensive mind, but he's out to prove that he can win without... So you think Josh you know, will play a little outside of himself? Oh, my God, yeah. I think he'll do too much. Because he's trying to prove that he can win without Stephon Diggs. What it do, YouTube, is Carfee.
Back at it, man, with some NFL talk, man, in a big game tomorrow. A grudge match of sorts is what it's really turning into media-wise, or is it really that real-life IRL, man? Bills versus Texans, Stefan Diggs with his new squad. I mean, we've been talking about this game prior to the season even jumping off when the schedule was released, man. And uh, you see Nico Collins of the Texans coming straight out and saying it, man, they got to win it for Steph. Check out what he said. He said, uh, we know it's a big game for Steph. We know what we got to do. We got to go out here and win for Steph. I'm happy for my dog. I'm happy that he's part of the Texans, but know this game means a lot to him. I feel like it's only right for us to go out there, have fun, and get this win for him, man. And you know, it's like, it'd be really intriguing, obviously. I'm, I'm turned up a Bills fan to see how this game goes down tomorrow. But you could see a lot at times through the energy. You know what I'm saying? Body language, the way people play, what it is exactly. You know, as things have just been so bizarre for, to me. Comment everyone out there and let me know if you agree the way things transpired between the Bills organization and Stefan Diggs, right? As, you heard Keyshawn Johnson too. You see a uh, renaissance man here saying, man, like, what is uh, the deal with Keyshawn? Does he just hate the Bills Like, because he was a divisional rival? Does he just hate Josh Allen? Does he take any chance he can to just get at him and troll him or whatever? Like Keyshawn, he's a media guy now, but he really hates the Bills, man. I feel like it's because then we used to shellac the Jets left and right when, um, you know, he was uh, actively playing and then at the end of the day if you guys remember he made such a fool of himself when he went to tampa there was a game where they played the jets it was like similar to this what we're talking about Diggs playing his former team the jets going up against the buccaneers you know and there was a lot of talk like are the jets better off without Keyshawn? Keyshawn was a diva Keyshawn this that and the third uh you know the the, the Jets still got Wayne Krabat. Wayne, is he actually the better receiver, et cetera? And Keyshawn went as far to say, like, we got this in the bag. You know what I mean? Comparing me to Wayne Krabat is like comparing a flashlight to a star or something like that. And the Jets went out there and lost the game. I think Wayne Krabat caught the winning pass on a, on a trick play, I think, or something like that. It was a good game, but it was just kind of showed... Keyshawn Johnson putting his foot in his mouth, making him look like, like a dumbass, making himself look like a dumbass. And I feel like he does that a lot, man. You know, I mean, I get it. You got to give those hot takes. You got to come out there swinging when you're on the podium, when you're on TV. You can't you can't be boring and everything. But I don't know. Sometimes it feels like Keyshawn Johnson is just doing too much. And you hear him um, speaking about this situation as you see the big tagline there, what the Texans' current quarterback, Shroud, saying that Diggs got a bad rap in Buffalo. And that kind of takes me back to where I was at talking about all this scene, saying how bizarre it was to watch everything play out where it looked like we saw some drama at times. Then it seemed like the media was ramping it up and just playing media games like they do, trying to make a story out of something that wasn't really there. We saw... Uh, that one um, season where the team was beat down, you know, like a, a long season. The DeMar Hamlin situation happened. The Bills were supposed to get that first round by. We didn't as we lost the game, you know, but thank God DeMar is OK and all that. And we lost and we saw Stefan Diggs just kind of blow up on the sidelines. But he's a passionate dude, you know, and then the next season we saw him being there for Josh Allen, you know, like being a good teammate, standing in solidarity with him. Um, I, I don't know, you know, it was so crazy. There was the hot mic situation. Just so much went on, um, you know, that the media kept trying to run with over and over. And I was the guy that just kept saying, oh man, this is just more hype than anything, you know? And then the, the, the off season came, the Diggs trade talk kept happening. And, um, you know, we had all the people break it down, the, the cap space and why it wouldn't make sense, why it's not going to happen. You know, like I'm not one of those dudes that's all up on it with all the cap room and everything. But we were assured there's no way that they would do this. And then next thing you know, Diggs is traded. And to me, it's felt more like he 
he fell off with the franchise, not the players, you know what I'm saying, with the, with the franchise. How did it exactly go down? Where did it go bad exactly? I don't know. Even leading into the playoffs last year, he did, uh, Stephon Diggs delivered a heartfelt. Um, as the Bills last year, we went through some struggles and turned it around. And Stephon Diggs gave this heartfelt, emotional uh, interview where he talked about when Brady took over the offensive coordinator duties. Like, you know, everyone stayed in the wheelbarrow was the metaphor they were using. And, you know, like he, he this is his squad. He's a bill and we're going to do the damn thing. And we turned it around. We won the division, won a playoff game, got eliminated once again. Yes, we did. But here we are now. And what does everyone think? What is everyone's, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, predictions for the game? What do you guys think about what all the analysts were saying there? You know, did Josh need Steph more than Steph needed Josh? Um, thus far, we're only a quarter way into the season. The Bills three and one. I like what I have seen offensively, the whole wide receiver by committee thing, you know, like, it, it, like Stefan Diggs being gone to me really opened things up and, you know, defenses didn't really know exactly how to approach the Bills offense and, you know, uh, what kind of plays we were running. But that's the thing about the NFL is in and out day after day, guys are watching film, people are, you know, putting together the chess boards and the game films and trying to figure out how to stop things that are working and how to, you know, beat defenses that are having su success. It's just an ongoing thing with the play calling and in the game film and stuff like that. And one of the dudes that was talking was basically saying the Bills getting beat by the Ravens in the way in which we did, which it was ugly. You know what I mean? There was a point in time that the momentum shifted back around and the Bills were in the game and then the momentum shifted back to Baltimore. And that was that, you know, and the one uh, gentleman there was basically saying like, oh, if Diggs was there, that's not how it would have been. Do you guys agree with that? Um, you know, do you think the Bills are paper champions? Have they been exposed like this dude was saying or what? You know what I'm saying? I want to know what everyone thinks. But some injuries to talk about for the Bills. Uh, one of our receivers who has been shining, man, he shined a little bit when Diggs was still here last year is Shakir. He's out. Shakir is out. Um, Let's see here. Shakir is out. Defensive tackle, tackle Ed Oliver and Austin Johnson are both out. Oliver, who I love that dude, man. Like, pause, right? He's a hell of a player, man. I love the energy that he brings and the playmaking ability and just everything that he does. He got hurt in practice, man. Uh, safety Tyler Rapp is also ruled out. But um, we're going to see Cole Bishop start in place of Taylor Rapp, the safety, right, alongside DeMar Hamlin. And Cole Bishop was a guy leading into the season that a lot of people thought was going to uh, win the, the, the battle at uh, safety. You know what I mean? So let's see how that goes. But, um, you know, Shakir out. Um, there's a couple other individuals. It's going to be a game time decision. Terrell Bernard and Teron Johnson have both been limited. I guess that will be a game time decision. So I don't know, man, big game. I can't wait to see. It's a game, like I said, me, myself as a Bills fan, a lot of other Bills Mafia out there. I know we've all been waiting for this uh, game. Diggs, Bills, Josh Allen, you know, uh, what's, now being looked at as like a grudge match, man. That's what the vibes are right now. It's like that and that it's a it's not just like, hey, we used to play together type game. I miss you. That it's gonna be a grudge match and things might get ugly and get physical. It'll be interesting to see in the pregame and the in the in the postgame, you know, the handshakes and hugs and everyone getting reacquainted with each other. I don't know. What do y'all think about it all? What do you guys think about the analysts we're saying? Predictions? Let's talk about it all in the comments. Subscribe and stay tuned for more. It's coffee. I'm out of here. Peace.